Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom with ATBBQ.com and this is Brisket and Cheddar Smoked Sausage. Yes, today we are going to walk through the entire process of making a beef sausage from scratch, starting with a whole prime brisket. We're gonna break that down, we're gonna grind it up, we're gonna get some seasoning in there, we're gonna grind it again, we're gonna stuff it into casings, and then we're gonna smoke it on the yoder. We've got a lot of work to do, let's jump right in. So here's what we're starting with. We've got, this is probably about 12 pounder uh, prime brisket from Creekstone Farms. We're pretty much gonna utilize this whole thing. What I'm gonna do to start off here is I'm gonna cut these bits into strips so that I can feed them right down into my grinder. And as you can see, this is really lean meat. This is really fatty meat. That's all gonna even out to give us a really fatty sausage. I mean, probably somewhere in that like 70, 30 range. These slices start to get a little too thick. We'll split them just to make sure we can feed them down into that grinder. So there we have it, fully broken down. At this point, I'm gonna throw this in the fridge. We'll always wanna keep our meat cold when we're making sausage, and we'll set up to grind. All right, so we've taken our components out of the freezer. We want everything to be super cold because when we're cutting fat and meat, we don't wanna be smearing that fat. We want that fat to be cold cut so there's little pockets of it. It's essential to the texture of the sausage. That cutter in place, and then the die that we're using today, this is a 10 millimeter die. So, you know, medium, large-ish. We're gonna get two passes on this today. The first one is gonna be right now with that brisket that we just sliced up. Fire up the big bite grinder, and then we're just gonna drop those strips down the tube. All right, so that is the whole brisket. At this point, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scale out exactly 10 pounds of this ground meat, and the rest of it I'm just gonna set aside for sausage, burgers, taco meat, whatever. Now that 10 pounds of ground brisket and the components for the grinder, they're all chilling out right now while we make our slurry. Now the slurry is essentially uh, liquid, ice, your seasonings, and your binder all mixed together. We're gonna pour that over the ground beef and then grind it one more time. So I'm gonna start with eight ounces of ice cubes. And a little more. Then we're gonna do eight ounces of beef stock. And you could use any kind of liquid you like here. You could use water, uh, you could use beer if you like. I really like the flavor of the beef stock for this sausage. Next we're gonna come in with our binder. Now this is just one cup of non-fat milk powder. It adds a lot of juiciness to the sausage. It also helps to bind it to make it sticky and give it that sausage texture. Next, we're gonna add a half cup of kosher salt. Then we're gonna do one half cup of black pepper. And these are, they're just freshly ground. This was the whole Teletary black peppercorns. I ground that down to get about a half cup, and it's fairly coarse as far as the grind goes. Next, we've got our smoked paprika, six tablespoons, a quarter cup of cayenne, you can go more or less depending on how much heat you like. A quarter cup, this is freeze-dried garlic. Uh, but as we blitz this up, it'll kind of get a little bit smaller, but it'll be kind of a little bit chunky, not a lot chunky, but just a little bit chunky in our sausage. Celery seed here. And then that garlic also kind of rehydrates inside the sausage. Just a little bit of cumin as well. So we're just gonna throw this on the Vitamix and break down that ice a bit, mix everything up.
and what you get is about the most savory milkshake you've ever seen there. <laughs> Not too appealing now, but it'll be great later. So slurry goes right over our 10 pounds of ground brisket. We'll give this a quick mix just to kind of coat everything. That liquid kind of just gets sucked up by the meat. And then when we do this second grind, now that we've got all these seasonings in there, that seasoning gets worked into that meat even more because we're cutting it right into it. All getting, uh, getting happy together at the same time. All right, we're not gonna go full on kneading here. We'll do that here in a minute. At this point, let's run it back through the grinder. So you can kind of see the consistency as it's coming out now. A bit finer, but it's still got some real texture to it. We're not like, we're not making like bologna here. We still want it to have some bite, some texture to it. And you'll be able to see that in the slice with the finished product. All right, there's the last of it. At this point, I've got to chill this back down before this fat starts melting. So this is going to go back into the fridge for just a little bit. Now, while that beef is chilling down again, we're going to prepare these natural hog casings. Now these right here, these have just come out of that dry pack and they soaked in some warm water for about 30 minutes to an hour. These actually went overnight, but 30 minutes to an hour is all you really need before they start to soften up. And you just want to keep swishing them around, dump that water out, add some fresh water, swish it around. And then what you're going to do is you're going to find one hog casing all together, and we're going to run some water through it to rinse out the inside. So just open up that end there, fill it up with some water all the way through to the other side. And we'll just do that a couple of times here. You can even kind of roll this back and forth to help rinse that out. And then once you've done that, you're gonna transfer it to another bucket or mixing bowl, whatever works for you. Collect both ends together and hang them over the edge so that you know where to find both ends. We're just gonna repeat that process with each length of the hog casing here. Back outside to the table now, we've got our chilled down meat, we've got our cheddar cheese that we're gonna incorporate and we need to get our primary bind on. So we're manually gonna mix this meat mixture to turn it into sausage, to create that primary bind. And that's what gives that sausage its sausage texture. So we've got eight ounces of sharp cheddar cheese to our 10 pounds of sausage here. And this stuff I've just, chopped up and broken down in the food processor till it's kind of this gravelly pea-sized shape. And we're just gonna work all of this in here. We're gonna do this quickly and efficiently because again, we don't wanna be melting fat. But we just need to kind of work this meat here for a minute until it's nice and sticky, tacky, and holds together. Feel it start to get that stick to it now. So when I release, the meat doesn't want to let go of me. See that, how it's just sticking all together, it wants to stick to the hand, wants to stick together. That's what we're looking for. Now we're gonna transfer this straight over to uh, the loader here. I'm gonna pack it down as it goes down inside, flat, keeping any air bubbles out of there. And we'll load up as much as we can. We're gonna have a little more than 10 pounds of sausage and this is a 10 pound stuffer so we'll probably have to do one refill here and then all of this can go back into the refrigerator while we set up to actually stuff these sausages all right we're all set up loading up our sausage now i'm gonna get the horn in place right here and now we're gonna load our casings onto the horn so we'll give it a little dip in the water here, run a little water through the inside of this casing as it's going onto the horn, 
because that just helps it to slide that much easier. If this thing gets dry, it's going to be a problem. It's going to be hard to squeeze that out of there. It's going to be hard to move anything. So we try and keep everything wet during this process. So just open that up a little dip, dip, dip. And that water kind of just carries through there to help it slide. All right, we're going to stop there for now. See how far that gets us. I'm going to crank down just a little bit. We're going to start to push the sausage just out to the end of the horn. There I can see it right there. So we're going to stop, come out here. And you can choose to tie this off now or leave it open. It's totally up to you. Sometimes leaving it open makes it a little bit easier when you're doing links later if you need some wiggle room. So we'll go ahead and just leave it open for now. I'm going to start to put some pressure. I'm pinching down on the horn as I start to press the sausage into the casing. And you're just going to have to get used to the feel of this to know how full to stuff it. And here, just before you get to the end of that one, we're going to let off the pressure. And then we'll go ahead and turn these into links now. So what we're going to do is the pinch, pinch, twist. You're going to measure out your links, pinch, pinch, twist, and you're just going to twist until this one feels nice and firm. And you've got, there you go, two plump sausages right next to one another. You can tie that into one off now. And do this once again, pinch, pinch, twist. This one's stuffed just a little bit tight for this, which is why it's nice when you can leave yourself a little bit of room at the end there. We haven't tied off yet. We can kind of pinch toward the end so that we don't over twist this one. And the great thing about this method is you never have to remember which direction you were going because you can always twist in the same direction. Just light pressure on the horn. It's mostly doing the work all by itself though. Stop. And again, we're going to go pinch, pinch, twist. Pinch, pinch, twist. This, this one's overstuffed. Not bad. Pinch, pinch, twist. So at this point, we're going to transfer our sausages over to a wire rack over a sheet pan. And this is ready to go to the fridge. So at this time, you want your sausage to go into the refrigerator uncovered and rest overnight. And during that time, what's gonna happen is the pellicle will form on the surface of the sausage. What that is, it just means a little sticky surface that allows the smoke to adhere to the meat even better. Now I went ahead and made a batch of our sausage yesterday, so we've got some ready to go. All we gotta do is fire up the smoker so we can get that sausage smoking. But today we're cooking on the Yoder Smokers Loaded Wichita Offset Smoker, and we're going low and slow. So we're gonna start with a little chimney of charcoal just to give us a coal bed, then we'll start rolling splits over on top of our coal bed. Charcoal is hot. I'm going to dump that out. You can see we're kind of keeping it concentrated to the back half of the firebox. That's where we're going to keep our small hot fire. Trying to maintain a low temperature today down around 200 degrees. And initially here we'll just get one split of our pecan wood right there on top and another right here up front to preheat so that it combusts immediately when we roll it over when we need that later.
So while the smoker comes up in temperature and stabilizes, we're gonna take yesterday's links that we've tied but not cut yet and go ahead and get them separated. So here's our 10 pound batch from yesterday. Like I said, they've already been twisted, but they're still connected. So we're gonna go ahead and take this opportunity to take these apart. You can see we've got them up here on the jerky rack or cooling rack so that we can be sure to get air all the way around them to form that pellicle. And that's just that slight tackiness on the surface of the sausage that's gonna soak up all that smoke flavor. Now being that we're doing such a big batch today, what the plan is here is we're gonna get a nice smoke on these and bring them up to about 150, 155 degrees Fahrenheit. Then we're gonna throw the sausages into an ice bath to stop the cooking process. And that's gonna allow them to stay right at that perfect doneness. Whether you're gonna eat some tonight, or you're gonna freeze them, thaw them out, heat them back up on the smoker or the grill, they'll still be juicy. All right, our temp gauges are eating about 180, 195, right and left side. So that's a great range. We wanna keep it under 200 today. We're gonna to go away from the heat. We're doing a slow smoke on these. Remember, we're not just cooking these, we're using that smoke as a seasoning. So we wanna make sure that we're tasting it. The sausages have been on for just over an hour at this point. Uh, some of them are starting to get done, the ones closer to the fire, so we're pulling those off to put them in the ice bath at this time. So these guys over here to the right, now temping closer to 160, so we wanna make sure we pull those before they get any further. Now, even though we pricked these sausages, you can see we got a little air bubble left in there, but just look at that brisket fat that's rendered out into the sausage. You know that's gonna be tasty. I've loaded up the brine bucket with ice water, so we're just gonna dunk these sausages in here to stop the cooking process. So about 146 on these right here. So these, these are gonna be the last ones that we leave for now. Everything else was hot enough to come off. We'll just close this back up, make sure we've got good smoke rolling and keep cooking. Well, about an hour and a half total cook time now and our sausages are all past that 150 mark. So we're plopping these out of here and into our ice bath. I'm gonna set aside just a couple of these to put in the Cambro and hold hot, and we'll have a taste of those warm in a little bit. Now, most of our sausages have chilled down in that ice bath at this point, but those few that we set aside for the Cambro, they've stayed warm over the last 10 minutes or so. Let's slice into them and see how we did. Let's just start right in the middle here. Oh boy. That's a fatty sausage. See, I love this cheddar in here. This is not a high temp cheddar, right? So instead of just completely holding its form, it just becomes a part of that sausage that melts in your mouth. So you, then you get these little pockets of ooey gooey cheddar right in the middle. Man. It just melts in your mouth. And there's so much flavor there. Big time beefiness. Getting all that stuff that we put into that seasoning mix. All the red stuff, the cayenne's giving you just a little bit of heat. The smoked paprika's smoky. You know, it's salty, of course. You got that black pepper kick to it. Just that hint of cumin, just barely there. Just enough. But that cheese, man, that's where it's at. Now for these chilled down sausages. Typically, I'll pull these out of the ice bath. Just give them a little wipe down with a clean towel. And then this is ready to be packaged. You know, put it into cryovac and throw it in the freezer, throw some in a Ziploc, whatever you want to do with them. You can serve these cold even, you know, just like you would any sort of sausage, serve it with some crackers, some cheese, put it on a charcuterie board. It's cold and set up so that cheese isn't oozing anymore, but it still tastes great. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to check out atbbq.com for all the products featured in today's video. If you enjoy the recipe, hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions or comments, or there's anything you'd like to see me cook, let me know in the comment section down below and let's be good to one another. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head over to atbbq.com slash the sauce. All things barbecue or barbecue legends are made.